Indie games, aka independent persons developer video games, are games made by a usually small team of people to make their creative idea come to life. Indie games are some of my favorites because of this, and some of the best indie games are in my opinion some of the best games of all time because they're full of passion. Undertale, Hollow Knight, Dead Cells, Buck Fables, Celeste, and Spearfair. A cute game about death. Now death in video games typically plays quite a unique role. In most games, dying just means, damn, I'm bad at this game. And when a different character dies in a video game that you're playing, it's either, no, or, damn, I think he's dead. But death in Spearfarer is approached differently. Firstly, because everyone is already dead. But aside from that, the spirits that you meet and befriend still have to be passed into the afterlife. So death's job isn't yet complete. And you know this. You can want to avoid death, but ultimately, you know that you have to accept it. The game's premise revolves around death. But what is Spiritfarer? Well, Spiritfarer for me is a cute indie game that I saw while watching one of the Indie World Nintendo Directs. And I saw the trailer for this game, and while I was watching it, I noticed that it was basically a task management game similar to Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, and Stardew Valley. And while yes, but no. I really did like what I saw from Spiritfarer. The trailer I watched had this really wholesome animated segment just showing the emotion behind the game, and I'm like, damn, that looks pretty good. So I decided that if I'm gonna play a game like this, I want it to be this one, and I had a feeling it was going to be something I would enjoy. So the game itself basically opens up with you, the main character, Stella, and your cat sleeping on a boat, and it's all peaceful and calm and beautiful. What the? So that is the former Spiritfarer. Quite a difference compared to you in, I don't know, size? and terrifyingness, but regardless, it's your job now as the spirit fur to find comfort and help these spirits onto the afterlife. First of them you meet being Gwen. Now Gwen is, you know, actually funny enough, an old friend of yours, and you find this out pretty quickly through your time spent with her. As the player, you end up building a connection with her actually, and this is how it is with each and every spirit you meet. You learn about these people's past lives, their best moments, their regrets, their achievements, and their emotions. They feel real. Oh, also you're on a boat. Yeah, so you navigate the sea, and this is where that good old fun element of exploration comes in. You can go anywhere you want to go, like this way. Guys, I'm lost. But let's talk about the gameplay. Now, the gameplay in this game is basically manage everything ever. Okay, just gotta put this in the oven. Nice. Oh, got our reentry trajectory. Uh, uh, gotta water the plants. Here, take your food. You don't like popcorn? I only have corn seeds. What am I supposed to do? So that's basically half of the gameplay. It's crazy because it's actually fun and soothing. I genuinely have a good time just being as helpful as I can for the spirits. It's also good because there's a good sense of progression that's not really overwhelming. There's something always to do as well, whether it's upgrading your boat, planting crops, finding material, upgrading rooms for your boat, or getting items for your spirits, especially getting items for your spirits because they were endlessly guilt trip you into building that wooden chair for them even though you have no wood. The other half of the gameplay is the exploration and there is a lot to explore. You go to these islands and you can instantly tell, wow, this is unique. So many of these places are so distinct and memorable and also just cool. It's like each place you go to either has its own community or history to it. But there's more than the gameplay to this game that makes it so good. Gameplay, while an important factor, is not the only factor that makes a game good to me. There are a couple different reasons why I hold this game in such a high regard. First, it's it's so polished. Like, how? You're, you're an indie game. This shouldn't be possible. There's just a lot of attention to detail, and it's crazy. Like, just while you're playing this game, you notice these little idle animations or just things to enhance the overall feel of the game and they did it so well. It's it's honestly very nice. It's something you really have to play the game to really realize how much attention to detail went in and overall polish there is. But just looking at gameplay or the trailer, you can really see, wow, that's pretty good. Second, it's filled with emotion. You see, I easily get attached to characters that I probably shouldn't. Yes, it's an indie game where you have to take care of spirit animals to you, but to me, I like these characters a lot, and I want to do my best for them, even if they refuse to make that amazing popcorn I made. Finally, it's simple and fun. Call me crazy, but I like video games that are fun. Spiritfarer offers a healthy balance of, let's explore the seas this way and this way and grab these and do this and and that's nice. Also, I haven't talked about the music yet, but I've been playing it throughout this entire video. And let me just say, the music is amazing. 
Max LL, you crazy genius with your elegant and emotional soundtracks to enhance, no, not even enhance, to fully realize the spirit of this game. Their entire OSD is in the description if you want to give it a listen. It's actually right next to that subscribe button that you can actually click, you know, to show your support. Plus, if you want to go above and beyond, you can also like the video, and that basically tells YouTube that this video is good and they should show it to more people. And that's cool. I think what the team behind Spiritfarer did so well aside from making an incredibly beautiful, fun, and polished indie game, was bring a unique twist on a concept in games. Similar to how roguelike games like Dead Cells, oh my god, I haven't beat Dead Cells yet, but why do why do I make videos about video games? I suck at video games. I haven't beat Dead, why am I making- Dead Cells had that fun roguelike concept of if you died, you started from the beginning of the map also known as internally making me suffer. Stuff like that is not something that could only hook people in, but can be explored to an endless degree. Experimenting with concepts and ideas and remixing what we already know is what makes games good. Not as a cheesy twist and not as a gimmick, but as an idea that evolves the landscape of what we know as gaming. And that's what I think Spiritfarer, as well as so many other indie games that I love, did so well. This game tackles the very real and heavy theme of death in such a personal way. In no way I've actually seen before in a video game. It's heartfelt, it's bittersweet, and it's emotional, but it's done in such an elegant way to help accept that concept of death. If I were an indie game developer, this would be one of those games that I would constantly look towards for inspiration and reference on how to make a thoughtful indie game. I haven't talked about each of the characters you meet throughout the journey or the deeper stuff because I would want you to experience it by, by playing it. Just know Atul is my favorite character. I love this man. Or, or I guess, um, frog. Because he's a frog. All of the characters have their own charm to them. All of the islands have their own charm to them. All of the animations have their own charm to them. And most importantly, this specific animation is great. I like this game a lot because I think it's a really good game. Or maybe I love this game because I'm such a great manager. Hmm? Ah, the boat's on fire. 